Let's cover a brief review of the 2022 Singapore corporate bond market as well as the credit outlook for 2023. Usually the developments of the last 12 months can give us a good insight into what's going to happen in the next 6 to 12 months. Now I think we're all aware of the challenging market environment for credit in 2022 that was plagued by decades high inflation as well as rising interest rates and this led to a slowdown in economic activity in the second half as well as a lowering of economic forecasts for 2023. Against this, however, the Sing dollar corporate bond market was actually relatively resilient. Issuance volumes of around 22 billion were down 12% year on year from the nine year high in 2021. However, all things considered, that is actually not a bad outcome. And especially when you look at the drop in volumes in the Asia dollar market. Issuance volumes in the Sing dollar market in 2022 were helped by a rise in issuances from higher quality credits. And these are from financial institutions as well as government-linked issuers. Financial institutions were the largest issuers in the SING space in 2022, and supporting that were expectations of funding costs going higher, the building up of capital buffers against possible valuation losses on financial instruments, a relative lack of supply of SING dollar uh, bank capital instruments in the last one to two years, as well as it being cheaper for banks to issue in the SING space in 2022. For government-linked issuers, the largest issuer was HDB, who issued their inaugural green bond. On the other hand, Singapore REITs saw issuances drop sharply. Of interest is that the largest issuance in 2022 by Singapore REITs was a sustainability-focused bond. Other key trends in the SING dollar credit market was a clear preference for issuances in the short to belly uh, part of the curve. And we think this is where both issuers and investors were able to uh, adequately satisfy their risk return requirements. The other interesting trend last year was the non-call of six non-financial corporate perpetuals. And this surpassed the uh, five non-calls that happened in the preceding 18 months. As we enter 2023, we expect challenging conditions to persist for both fundamentals and issuance. Whilst the worst is deemed to be over in terms of inflation, we are still mindful of slowing economic growth and the possible laggard effects of the interest rate increases that happened in 2022. And this could pressure the fundamentals of issuers in the sing dollar credit space and lead to credit spreads widening. We also think that given the slowing economic outlook, that issuers will delay issuing uh, bonds, and this will also pressure supply in 2023. We also expect a range of possible scenarios to play out in 2023 with some variability in outcomes which have diverging outcomes for investors. These include a possible front loading of rate hikes, a possible synchronized tightening after a pause at the end of 2023, or in a more optimistic scenario that we see a soft landing in the global economy. Against this, however, we still expect that there will be resilient issuance volumes in the SING space. There is still an elevated number of bonds that are maturing. We still expect that government-linked issuers will continue to issue, and this will be supported by their sustainability development plans. In addition, the SING space is seen as a relative safe haven, considering the general credit quality of the issuers our theme for the first half of 2023 is therefore keeping it short. From a technical outlook perspective, we think the downside is limited, but from a fundamental perspective, we also think the upside is limited. What this means is that whilst there is a clear preference or bias towards credit spreads widening, we think that this, the widening will not be too great. We think that investors should stay at the shorter end of the curve and continue to focus on bullet bonds. We think that bottoms up analysis is still the preferred outcome considering the weaker outlook. And again, considering the non-call of the non-financial corporate perpetuals in 2022, that uh, issuers should also focus on structural risk.